Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to give you a sneak peek of a project that I'm working on. Could be an instructional website, could be a book. You're just going to have to hang around and, and find out. But we're going to talk about the different types of networks. And I'm going to tell you this, this list is probably not inclusive. There's probably some that I've left off the list because I haven't touched them or I I don't know what they are, and even some of these I haven't touched, but they were available to me as a resource as I was looking around grabbing the names of the, some of the different types of networks. Now, the data that flows over these could be what we're used to, you know, UDP packets, TCP packets. Inside of those packets could be audio, could be video, could be emails or whatever. We are talking about the, the networks themselves. You know, whether you're interested in getting into network architecture, network administration, or IT in general, whether you tinker in a home lab, whether you're the, the person that the, you know, the small business down the street calls, or whether you've got a consulting business, you might find some of this helpful so that you can navigate the world of networks. But here's one thing I'm going to tell you. Almost everything in our world is now networked, and it relies on networks. So, when the programmers and the networking guys and the security guys, so I'm a, I'm a voice over IP networking and security guy and a storage guy and all those. But when I first started my career back in the 90s, I was the 1990s, not the 1890s. I was a network guy, concentrated on Cisco networking and then into Juniper and then into whatever I could get my hands on. And then, of course, Grandstream and Ubiquity and Synology and all the things, right? There's a lot of networks out there. We're going to go through these. We're going to talk about it. And if you know of networks that I left off this list, make sure you put them down in the comments. And then I'll, I'll update this, this list. So let's get to it here. So we've got the types of networks, whether it's traditional, industrial, wireless, and niche network types. I've got all of these alphabetized. I've got them broken up, broken up into sections. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to talk about is broadband and satellite networks. So a cellular network could be anything from 2G to 5G and whatever comes after 5G. You might hear LTE thrown around, th things like that. So we have the cellular networks, most traditionally known for phone calls and texting. And now, of course, internet connectivity. Then we have satellite networks. So a satellite network is going to give us a much larger global coverage, larger geographical coverage. And if you've paid attention to the news, you know that Starlink, you've got HughesNet, and there are also private network networks deployed based on satellites, such as governments, private companies, things like that. And then we have broadband networks, which could be DSL, cable internet, fiber, could be back in the day, T1. I had T1s running to my house. People had ISDN. Um, if you know what ISDN stands for, it's not, it still does nothing. But that's a, was always the joke in our circles. So we've got these types of network. Now with the broadband, most of the time that's going to get us from a from a home or from an an office to the internet. And you can see where the cellular networks with like T-Mobile and things like that, they're kind of blurring those lines between the cellular offering that home internet and that business internet as broadband. So with fiber, you can also actually do private networks over the fiber. We're going to get off track if we keep going because you can really extend all of these networks over top of each other. Okay, so the next slide here, common and well-known networks. So you have a PAN, which is a personal area network, and it's very short range. So think about like your watch or your earbuds, your ear pods, a, he a headset, any other Bluetooth device that connects Bluetooth is going to be the most common protocol for personal area networks. So any of those devices that 
connect in a very short range. I know what you're saying. Bluetooth can now go meters and things like that, but it is still going to fall into that personal area network. And it is going to be, you know, things that are typically very close and you name a device. I mean, medical devices that people wear now can also be Bluetooth. So you have a network on you all the time and then it's connected to the cellular network. So and then maybe you're connected to Wi-Fi, which we're, you know, we'll get into that. See how everything is connected? It's a big spider web. We've got local area networks, so it covers a small area like a building, office, or a school. A WLAN is your wireless area network. So it is the LAN version, is a LAN using wireless or Wi-Fi See how they got that, the, the wireless local area network. CAN is a, uh, and, and you're going to see CAN in another slide too, because there's, <laughs> we're going to reuse these, these acronyms. But uh, CAN in the common and well-known networks is campus area networks, connects multiple lands and a campus or business area. We have a MAN, which is a metropolitan area network, which covers a city or a metropolitan area. So if you've got multiple buildings in a larger city or even a, a smaller city, but they're all connected, you've created a metropolitan area network. The WAN is the wide area network, covers large geographic areas, and we could consider the internet to be the biggest WAN of them all. And then again is the global area network with global communication and things like that. So it is much larger than a WAN. We've got data and storage networks. So if you're familiar with some of the work we've done here, your SAN is your storage area network. And that is a high speed network for data storage access. And our mo most commonly used protocols on that's going to be iSCSI, uh, Fiber Channel, or NFS. Then you've got a NAS, which is network attached storage, which is storage devices connected to a network, but maybe they're not high speed. Uh, Synology does have a SAN. There's all kinds of, of people that create SANs out there, companies, and there's all kinds of people that create NASs. You've got your data center network, which is the network infrastructure within an actual data center. So someone like DigitalOcean or AWS or Google would have a data center network in their data center. And then a content delivery network, which distributes web content, right? So if you ever are on a website and you see those funny URLs where it's pulling images from, so it's pulling that from a content delivery network. Cloudflare could also be considered a content delivery network. Then we've got industrial and embedded networks. So here we're using CAN again, and this is where that, that kind of came in. So all of the acronyms can get kind of blurry sometimes. Just our industry, just like the medical industry, just like the law industry, lots of acronyms. I don't expect you to know these all, but maybe something here is going to spark your interest and you're going to dig in. So I am familiar with CAN in uh, both the, uh, the uh, uh, traditional and in the industrial and embedded networks. So in this industrial and embedded networks, CAN stands for controller area network, and it's used in vehicles and machinery for communications between microcontrollers. And where I had my experience as that was with forklifts. I worked for the largest ha material handling company in North America, and when they started rolling out forklifts that had these controllers on them, you could do things like make it so you couldn't spin the wheels. You could tell how heavy the operator on the seat was. You could tell the ambient temperature. You could stop the pitch of the forks, right? So they brought some of that modernization into forklifts. A LIN is a local interconnect network. I don't have any experience directly that I know of with this, but it's a simplified cost-effective network in automotive systems. You have FlexRay, which is the flexible ray communication. It's a high-speed automotive communication network. You have MOST, which is media-oriented systems transport. It's used in your car for the multimedia systems. So your radio, your stereo, if you've got entertainment throughout, if you've got all that new cool stuff where you can 
you know, do an intercom to the back, it probably rides over that. You've got EtherCAT, which is Ethernet for Control Automation Technology, and that is high-speed communication and industrial automation. You've got Profinet, which is Process Field Net, which is Industrial Communication Network for Automation. You've got Modbus, which I am familiar with, which is Modular Communication Bus, used for communication between industrial devices. And then Field Bus, which is the Field Bus system and is a network for real-time distributed control. Then we have IoT and wireless networks. So you've got a WPAN, which is a wireless personal area network, which is that short range network, and it can use Bluetooth or Zigbee. You've got a wireless sensor network, WSN, which is networks of sensors that collect and transmit data wirelessly. You have LoRaWAN, which is long range wide area network. It's low power and long range communication for IoT usually runs sub in the sub one gigahertz frequency range. And when you get into LoRaWAN, you get a lot of battery life because sometimes these things are only kicking on once every so often and transmitting small amounts of data. It could be a door sensor, it could be a temperature sensor, it could be a driveway sensor, it could be, you name a sensor, they're out there for LoRaWAN. You've got NB IoT, which is narrowband IoT, and that's a cellular network for low bandwidth IoT applications. And then you have Sigfox, which I, I don't have any experience with this. I did find it out there. You've got uh, the Sigfox network, which is low power wide area network for IoT. I'm assuming the more I dig into LoRaWAN, which is something that I'm working on, I haven't done any videos on it yet because I'm just not comfortable enough with my knowledge base on that yet to start kind of spreading that awareness. I'm sure that some of these other things are going to come into play because I've seen LoRaWAN gateways that also have uh, SIM trays that you can hook these into cellular networks. So I'm sure that all of these things are going to come into play at some point. Then we have specialized and niche networks, right? So we've got a dark net. And that is a private overlay network with restricted access. You have the Tor or Tor network, which is a anonymous focus network using the onion routing protocol. You got ad hoc networking, which is if you just take two computers and plug an ethernet cable in between them and you don't have a DHCP server, they're gonna get an APIPA address, which is those IP addresses that start with 169. And you can communicate that way. That's the simplest form of ad hoc. You can also, have phones with near field communication and you can communicate directly between the devices. Some of you with newer printers know that you can uh, communicate directly with printers over NFC, all kinds of things with ad hoc where there's no centralized uh, infrastructure to make that happen. It's just kind of peer to peer. You have a mesh network so each no node forwards data to the network. So everything is kind of meshing together. You have a DTN, which is a delay, delay tolerant network used where connections are unreliable and delayed. NASA has provided awesome write-ups on DTN because that's what they use in like to do things in outer space, right? And then of course I had to throw this one in uh, just as kind of a joke. A sneaker net, which is a physical transfer of data via removable media, floppy disk, CD, USB, external hard drive. A lot of us came from sneaker net. A lot of us still use sneaker net. And then we've got our virtual and logical networks. So you've got your VPN, which is a virtual private network, which creates a secure encrypted tunnel over the internet or over a private network between either two networks or a road warrior or some sort of endpoint device and a network. You've got an overlay network, which is a virtual network that rides on top of another network. So we've got zero tier, you've got tail scale, all these overlay networks ride on top of another existing network to create those secure communications. We have VLANs, which is virtual local area network. And that logically separates devices on the same physical network. We have the NFV, which is the Net Network Function Virtualization. So it runs network service 
services uh, virtually. So you can have, if you've ever done fabric networking with like extreme networks, you you know, you can do firewalling, router switches, everything is in like a big fabric. Everything runs kind of virtually. And then you have these software defined networks, which are networks controlled by software for flexibility and automation. And you can see where NFV and SDN might start blurring some of those lines. And let me know what you think. Do you think that some of the stuff that we show here, like when you use gdms.cloud and you join your grand stream or whether you use unified, do you consider those to be software defined networks? Or you do you think that something that's like white label where you buy the box and run the software on it, is that a software defined network? Let me know what you think of that down below. And this should be the last slide. So we covered a lot of different types of networks in a very short period of time there. But that just goes to show you networks are everywhere and they're responsible for reliably, sometimes not so reliably, transmitting the data that makes our modern world go round. So if you've got a programmer friend and he's always complaining about the network, cut him some slack, right? Because you know, without the network, the programming stuff, you know, unless you load it via sneaker net, it's really not going to go anywhere. Everybody needs to work in harmony in IT. Security folks need to work with the network folks, need to work with the programmers. We all have a place in the ecosystem and every part is as vitally important as the other. So let me know down in the comments what networks I missed. I know I missed some. Let me know if you've got questions about any of these, any of the ones that I'm familiar with. I can definitely talk in depth about them. The ones I'm not familiar with, I am going to get myself up to speed. This would be a great topic over on our community. So, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and share. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below along with affiliate links, a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, you need to get your network tuned up. You want to create a new network. You want to talk more about networks, maybe build a new one, get an audit, whatever it is. If you need voice over IP, storage, networking, security, all those things, head on over to willyhow.com, fill out the contact form that's on the front page, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Like I said, come on over to community.willyhow.com and start a conversation about your favorite kind of network, and let's see where the conversation leads. Once again, I'm Willie. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.